dear ones. You're listening to the What God Is Not podcast with Father Michael O'Loughlin and Sister Natalia. Glory to Jesus Christ. Glory forever. How's it going? I'm perfectly content right now. Good. I'm sitting here in my front office and I am privileged enough to have a front office and a back <laughs> office. Um, it's just funny when I say that, like in Denver, I had no office. Um, so I'm sitting you in the front office. You had an office slash cry room slash confessional slash... That had no heating or air conditioning and it was yeah, Denver, that was Colorado. Yeah, horrible. <laughs> so most of my work was done either in coffee shops or on my kitchen table or in the church itself. Mm-hmm. Um, here I have a front office and a back office. Um, it's sunny and beautiful outside in Southern California. I am drinking coffee that Father Nathan made me, which is better than the coffee I had made myself this morning. And I am, yeah, life is good. It's snowing here. (laughs) Actually, I kind of miss the snow. We had, we have like a, a winter advisory warning or whatever it's called. Do you know what I'm talking about? Uh, winter weather. Weather. <laughs> advisory? <laughs> yes, I know oh. what a winter weather advisory is. No, I couldn't remember if I, I don't think I called it the right thing is what I meant. Oh, yeah, that's, that's right. right. It, well, okay. it depends on different things. Like winter weather advisory in Cleveland, Ohio means something very different than in Wyoming. Like winter weather advisory in Wyoming means you might die. Or <laughs> they have like wind advisories where literally semis should not be on the road, especially if they're empty. Like it's Mm -hmm. guaranteed if your semi is empty and you go on the road, the winds are so strong on the free, like on the, just on the normal freeway, I-25 heading North that you're, you're going to, your semi is going to blow over. That's insane. Just from the wind. So yeah, it's, it's, that is, I mean, I'm sitting here in Southern California where the weather is always (laughs) amazing. You're sitting there in Ohio where it's like, oh, it's snowing. But in my gosh, in Wyoming and some other places, yeah, you could, it's very Well, we do, we do also have lake effect snow here and- but it's not, we're not going to die. Um, yeah. I went for a jog this morning, even though it's snowy and mushy, out, not mushy, slushy. Slushy. <laughs> Slush is kind of mushy. <laughs> Outside, because I'm jogging now. Isn't that exciting? You're jogging so that you're not so mushy. <laughs> <laughs> that was pretty horrible. Um, but my but is, it, is, is it a necessary edit out, sister? No, it's fine. I, I, don't, I don't think there is a single... I, I, I had to email Steve again and say, hey, can you edit this I out? Know. You, you, you know what I'm talking about. And I'm like, yeah, I was thinking... that was bad. I don't think there's a single time where we've had to edit something out because you've said it. It's always been me. <laughs> so now I like, I'm like thinking, well, should I say it? She can take me calling her previous self, Little Mushy. You're not mushy anymore. <laughs> <laughs> You're just the worst. I'm just we're gonna, you were, you were are not going to be happy with that. <laughs> <laughs> you were never mushy and there's nothing wrong with being mushy. I'm certainly mushy. I'm, I'm, I'm mushing myself right now. <laughs> and I will say that's definitely <laughs> mushy. The weirdest, weirdest intro to the episode. Okay, back to Jesus. Um, no, but I'm excited that I'm jogging because cardiac rehab and I wasn't able to do that for a long time. And jogging is yeah. probably a strong word because it's only like a 12 and a half or 13 minute mile for 30 minutes. But um, yeah. I that's still think that's better than me. That better than what I could do. Um, No way. I'm getting old, sister. I'm starting to have feet problems on top getting? of just like not being too fit. Ouch. Okay, we're even. Um, <laughs> but just... Just like having, I, I don't think I can walk around anymore with bare feet. <gasps> I, know, I just have really, really flat feet. But if I walk around for five minutes with bare feet, my feet hurt. Wow. This is, it's just, I think this is how old people talk, right? They sit around the, the coffee shop in the morning and talk about all their ailments. That's okay. what we're doing right now. Okay, we're done. Okay. Um, <laughs> so we'll just jump into the episode then with only oh. <laughs> four minutes and 20 seconds of banter. That's really good. Um, some people are going to be really excited. I am doing an episode today. I feel like there's something else I was going to say. A shout out or something about, oh, only that I was thinking that next time Andrew Whaley's in town, you should have him on the mm-hmm. podcast. I was thinking about... Um, Andrew Whaley. What? Nothing. I'm just singing his name. <laughs> 
I have a weird <laughs> habit of like singing people's names. I do it all the time. Yeah, I know. <laughs> like you with do. all of Father Nathan's kids. I'm just like, I have little songs where I sing their name. I know. Molly girl. I say that a lot for Molly, his youngest. You always have kind of the same. Um, I know. It's tune. not that creative. <laughs> 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 it's not like I write a theme song for every person I know. It's just kind of just, I just sing their name in kind of a da 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 okay. way. <laughs> well, I was thinking this morning about how this is the first time in a while I feel like that we've recorded alone without any audience or guests or oh. something. Um, I mean, including last week's episode, which we just recorded right before this one. Are you saying this is insufficient? No, I was thinking boring? that it's kind of nice because I'm used to the dynamic with just you. And so sometimes oh. it's nice when it's just us. Um, right. But I was also then thinking, you've never had anyone on. I think only I have. And yeah. so next time Andrew Whaley's there, I want him to come on. Nice. Andrew Whaley, you never knew Andrew Whaley in person, right? Yeah. Andrew Whaley's a friend of mine from Denver and now from now kind of Ken California-ish. But he... Uh, How'd you meet him? I forget. Did you guys have just a brief chat on the phone or something like that? I don't know. Just through you. I don't remember oh, the first okay. time we talked. Well, he, he kind of knows all about you because he listens to the podcast. But Yeah, but I love you're, him. You're going to get that a lot, sister. That's how he had a Catholic stuff. Oh, Father Michael, I know all about you and you have no idea who I am. And I'm yeah, like, man, I, I, I share way too much on the podcast for people <laughs> to say they know all about me because <laughs> it's kind of true. <laughs> what's, what's gotten to be interesting is when people who listen to the podcast come to the monastery and they also know about some of the other nuns. Mm, yeah. So that's interesting. We just had, I had somebody tell me the other day about Catholic stuff. They said, I feel like I not only know you, but I know like the members of your fraternity that were never on the podcast and yeah. they know like aspects about them. I'm like, oh, that's... Not only do I overshare about myself, I overshare about other people. <laughs> but that's okay. Anyways, Andrew Whaley is awesome and he should come on. Also, Amen. Father Nathan Simeon. I want him we to come on do. and talk about church fathers because he's very knowledgeable. We can do both of those for sure. Yes, he is. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. All right. Today's episode, do you have any shout outs or anything? No, I just want to say let's please do any topic except listener questions. I'm just... I'm so over. Why do you always do that? Because <laughs> I think it's funny in my head. <laughs> I know you do. Maybe one of our listeners thinks it's funny too. Um, <laughs> Maybe one. <laughs> <laughs> um, the, you know what? We've, we get a lot of emails where people say that you need to be nicer to me. Um, other than my mom recently emailed and said, you don't need to be nicer to me. And it's, it's great. Um, <laughs> But because my mom's your biggest fan um, <laughs> and my dad is my biggest fan and my mom's always defending you to me. That's um, hilarious. But anyways, we get, we get emails from listeners who say that you need to be nicer to me, which I'm all about that. Um, but actually I'm pretty mean to you and people don't often. This is true. That part. This is true. So, well, I, I'm going to take that as a compliment by saying that I have thicker skin and I can handle more <laughs> thicker um, mushy skin <laughs> thicker mushy the, no, the skin's on top the mushiness is underneath <laughs> oh man this is so weird okay um <laughs> the and, and we can't even edit it out because it's so it's just the whole thing um okay so this episode obviously since father michael thought he was being so clever in his snark um is a q a episode and which I had said that we'll do every so often. And we did the first one about three months ago. So we're going to do the second one now. Let's do it. I'm excited. Are you ready? Are you I, am, I, I have no idea if I'm ready or not. I have not. I, I, I glanced at these questions five minutes ago. I know. And that's all I know. So I'm, I'm going to be, I'm going to be. We're just different people and that's okay. I, I'm perfectly fine jumping into this without having researched them at all. So great. Let's do it. The first question it's not from a listener. <laughs> what? Is it from you? No, it's from you. Sort oh. of. Um, Interesting. I finally, this morning during spousal prayers, um, wrote out a prayer that you asked me to write as a homework ah. assignment for one of the episodes. Yay. And since I wrote it this morning and I was suggesting to people that they prayed in the evening, I haven't actually used the prayer. Um, so that's the disclaimer. Okay. Um, but I remind us. 
I'm going to. And I say to. us of, of, of why. I'm going to. So, um, so if you could remind us of why before Father you. Father Michael. Before you. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Dad. You just kind of Sorry, Susan. It's all I did. That was like from my mouth, though. That wasn't on my nose. Like <laughs> normally, snows are from the nose, but it's like it's kind strange. of a weird coughing. Um, um, that happens to me a lot, actually. Okay, so in one of our episodes, which was, I believe, "Tell Me What You Want," I think so. Um, I was talking about how we, in some sense, choose our addictions. Like that, as humans. Um, we just, we become addicted to things. When we get something good, we want more and more of it, whether that's a, a natural good or a supernatural good. Mm. And, and whether it's some good at the root of something that is bad, um, but, but whatever it is, like when we find a goodness, something that brings us some sort of consolation, natural or supernatural, we just want more of it. And, mm. um, and so if we are focusing I, I was saying that I thought it was fruitful maybe at the end of our day to look through our day and look through, um, reflect upon how we've spent our time, whether it be what kind of work we're doing, um, what conversations we had, how we spent our free time, but not just the stuff itself, but our our attitude or mentality, yeah, or motivations within those things. And that it would be fruitful to look at those and and reflect upon, was I seeking God in this thing? And was I focused upon him so that he's what I want more and more of? Um, or was it on these other things that I'm grasping at for consolation outside of him? Yeah. And then you had suggested I write a prayer to pray before um, having this reflection because some people, especially people who are kind of of my temperament, would be tempted towards despair or (laughs) self-condemnation in looking at these things instead of of looking at them through the lens of God's mercy and forgiveness and all of that. Hmm. So that's what this prayer is. Okay. Um, and there's actually two prayers because one of them is a long prayer. But then I thought some people might not want to pray this long prayer, especially if this is something they're going to do every evening. They might just want something short. So I also have a very short prayer. But the long prayer gives the con- why are you smiling right now? I'm just it's it's just your your I love your dis- your disposition is so oriented towards mercy and like <laughs> trying to understand people where they are. <laughs> that it's just it's just I think it's beautiful that you thought of that. Oh. So go ahead, yeah. Okay. So I'll, um, I'll share the, the long one first. Jesus, our divine physician, you are so attentive to our need for healing and also to our desires. I hear the question you asked Bartimaeus echo in my heart. What do you want me to do for you? And I give you the same answer. I want to see. But help me, Lord, to see with your eyes. For I know that if I look back on today without you, the reflected image will be like that of a smudged and broken mirror. You who see all clearly, show me the places I failed to love you today because in my brokenness and fear, I was grasping at happiness instead of receiving the good things you so gladly give to me. Show me too the times today I was receptive of your grace and able to fix my gaze upon you. Give me in this time of reflection, a spirit of hope, joy, and repentance instead of despair, pride, or self-condemnation. And here you would pause to reflect upon the day for as long as you need. I ask your forgiveness, Jesus, for the times I failed to turn to you today, and I thank you for giving me strength in the times I did. I ask you tomorrow to decrease the former and increase the latter. I love you, Lord. Help me to love you better. Through the prayers of our Holy Fathers, O Lord Jesus Christ, our God, have mercy on us. Amen. Beautiful. That's the long one. Okay. <laughs> It'd be really bad if that was the short one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, That'd be very Byzantine okay. of us. And the short, <laughs> yeah, the short one is um, simply, Jesus, help me to see myself this day the way that you see me. Show me for repentance and not condemnation the times I've failed to love you today, as well as the times by your grace I loved well. 
Let me see all this so I may love you better tomorrow. Through the prayers of our Holy Fathers, O Lord Jesus Christ, our God, have mercy on us. Amen. All right, we got we to make that printable and put it somewhere where people can... You haven't memorized it? I just well, I, I have, but I'm... Uh, <laughs> But I love you so much. I just memorize everything that you say on the spot and uh, reflect oh, upon it for bad. days. <laughs> um, yeah, so we'll we'll uh, we'll make that available because that was beautiful. Thank you, sister. Absolutely. Homework well done. A Thanks. minus. Just kidding. A- what? Why <laughs> just minus? Just kidding. Uh, I had to throw that in there. A plus plus. You know, A minus is hard for me. <laughs> yeah, that's true. That, for me, that have been I'd have been ecstatic. <laughs> We had a Pustinic here, um, a Pustinia guest, a retreat in, last week, and his name is Christopher, and he is an engineer, which was very exciting, and we got to kind of swap some stories from college. I studied engineering, uh, engineering physics, for those who don't know that, and it was just really delightful because I got to like share stories and tell jokes that most Pustinics would be utterly uninterested in hmm. and would just politely smile. Um, and it was really nice. Nice. I was thinking of the A minus thing and how that, oh, okay. I was that's like, where that came from. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I wasn't going to ask, but I was like trying to nerd. figure it out. Okay. Hey, so, man. Yeah. Um, nice. Okay. Well, so, thank you. That, that was a great first question whoever sent it. <laughs> All right. Now we're going to move on to questions from listeners. Okay. And some of them I'm reaching pretty far back. I'll give the same disclaimer I did before. We don't, we get a lot of questions, um, which yeah. Father Michael realized when he opened this document. <laughs> and he's like, whoa, that's a lot of questions. Um, so we can't answer all of them. So we, we tried to pick the ones that were um, maybe the, of the most interest, the greatest interest to the most people. Um, or just the most easily answered by us. And that does not mean that we, we might we might not we might get to the other ones in the future too, yeah. depending on how many more come in and, and that discernment. So thank you for yes. sending them, everybody. Absolutely. Um okay, so this is an epi- this is a question that came in a very long time ago and the in an email, what God is not podcast at gmail.com is our email address. In an earlier episode, Sister Natalia said that God is not a vending machine. St. Thomas Aquinas says, quote, We do not pray for the purpose of changing God's plan. Rather, we pray in order to procure what God has planned to be fulfilled through the prayers of the saints. So that, as Gregory puts it, by asking men, by asking, men might merit to receive what Almighty God has planned from eternity to give them. End quote. And then the listener says, to me, this sounds like God has set aside certain goods that can only be unlocked through prayer, like candy in a vending machine that can be released only if you insert the right change and press the correct buttons. However, I am sure that if St. Thomas had encountered a vending machine, (laughs) he would have agreed with Sister Natalia. What am I missing? You let me know if you want me to go first or second. Oh, okay. Um, Well, my intuition, I also haven't um, prepared anything per se, but my intuition would be that um, it's, it it reminds me of the analogy that I I have is um, of an earthly father, right? Going back to the the scripture of if an earthly father knows how to give his his children good gifts, how much more so the heavenly father, um, wherever that is in scripture. Uh, But... It's, it's that God has these gifts for us, but he also is not going to force anything upon us. And, and so he allows us the opportunity to ask for these things and he desires to give us these good things, but, only, but, but when we've expressed that desire. And that's not always the case because often he's fulfilling my desires before I even realize I have the desire, <laughs> much less ask for it. Mm-hmm. Um, but, but there are times in which Um, he knows what is best for us. And so there are times in which he knows that what is best for us is to turn to him um, or to be in a place in which we need to turn to him in order to, um, to express the desire, I guess. I don't know. Does that make any sense? Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, That reminds me of, uh, 
<clears throat> of uh, uh, Andrew Whaley statement. We just talked about him um, <gasps> I love earlier. Andrew Whaley. Andrew Whaley statement. Um, and I, of just earning the right to be heard. And he's talking about evangelization. So in other words, if you are trying to evangelize someone to, to uh, facilitate a future relationship with Christ that they may have, um, you don't just start off with kind of the deeper aspects of theology or by just kind of stating mm-hmm. the truths because because they, they're not going to receive them. They are truths, but they, they, they're not going to receive them. So you need to, um, in in his mind, which I share, um, you need to kind of build a friendship first. You need to... You need to build a relationship so that you earn the right to be heard. And then they will actually listen to those truths once you've built up a relationship with them. So the same thing is true, um, I believe, in, in what you were saying, sister. There's a, there's kind of a, God's not going to, like you said, he's not going to force these gifts on us. He's going to prepare us over time to actually ask for the things that are going to make us the happiest. Because even if you look at our our biological maturity, you know, when we are children, we want things that are not good for us. You know, we then we we would we would harm ourselves by by doing if we only did the things that we wanted to do. Um, and so there's the same thing in the spiritual life. So yeah, that was the that was the first question. Second question, I guess, if we're counting the one from you. <laughs> um, and another one. This Did we one both is- answer that. What? This is how forget. You want me to want me to give my f- two cents about that too? You did. You talked about Andrew Whaley, and do you have more that you want to say? I don't know. I I'm sure I had other things. Anyway, we, we had can. To, we, we had to take a break in recording because we did. Showed up and someone showed up my door, so I, I'm I'm distracted <laughs> right now. Even though you might not have it might have not have seemed like we had a pause. Um, what was, so we what? were talking about the question, the vending machine <laughs> question. And <laughs> we were talking about the vending machine question and I talked about the good father and wanting us to express our desires and ask. And then you talked about, you know, why are you laughing? No, I'm, I'm just, I'm laughing you. myself. I'm la- I, I am, I, I am so ridiculous sometimes. Does any of this sound familiar? Just, oh yeah. Yeah. I just, yeah. Thank and you. you talked about Andrew Whaley and I said that I love Andrew Whaley. And then you were talking about <laughs> the... <laughs> It's just so funny, like because we had probably about a twenty minute break, and but but the listeners did not, so it just sounds like you're reminding me of something that happened thirty seconds ago. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, okay. let's just move on to the next question. All right, we're going to move on to the next question. But um, whoever sent that question, if you feel it was inadequately answered, <laughs> that <laughs> Father Michael needs to say more on it, then please do <laughs> reach out again. Uh, um, if that person even still listens to this podcast, yeah. <laughs> because that was a long time ago. All right. This question is from Lisa. Do you think it's safe to give first names always? Probably. As long as they're yeah, not like I, oddly specific things. I think that's, that's, yeah, that makes sense. We okay. can do that. Disclaimer, that's what the news does. if anyone doesn't want us to say even their first name, please say that. Um, Lisa... I know that you all answer various questions and I hope this one isn't too redundant. It's not, Lisa. You're the first one to ask it. I'm one of those who have celiac disease. As a Roman Catholic, I have a low gluten host that is good with the magisterium. How does that work for folks in the Byzantine world with the mixing of the body and blood? Just wondering and enjoy the podcast. By the way, obviously. She said obviously, not me. (laughs) (laughs) Um, that would have sounded very arrogant. So, cause I know in, I know in our, obviously you're the one who should answer this Father Michael, but I'm trying anyways. I know that <laughs> um, you said in our liturgy episode, when you talked about the announcement that you make, you said that mm-hmm. part of your announcement is that if someone is gluten intolerant, <laughs> that they should approach first and you'll give them just the blood. Um, but... That might not be what all pastors do. And so should they just make sure they talk to the priest before liturgy? Yes, that is always a good thing. Talk to the priest beforehand. And this is this is an important distinguishment to make. And this is kind of a, a difference between the way that we explain it in the East and the West. And that is just the the West uses the term that the Eucharist contained it within the consecrated host or the consecrated chalice is our Lord Jesus Christ, body, blood, soul, and divinity. And that, that that's a dogmatic statement about, and that is why sometimes the priest will not 
make the precious blood, which is is the body, blood, soul, and divin- divinity of our Lord available to the people because you don't have to because you, you the host, the consecrated host is the fullness of the body, blood, soul, and divinity of Christ. Um, we in the East just, just don't necessarily use that, that term just came out of the West. So we certainly understand that, that when you, if you receive, for instance, a chalice, people that are seriously celiac, you know, I, if people are gluten intolerant and that they can, they can still, you know, receive, if I just take the spoon that I would use to give the person the body and blood of Christ, namely the consecrated bread and consecrated wine. And if I just take some of the precious blood, that is obviously the fullness of Jesus Christ. We, that's probably where in the East we would stop. You know, we, we don't, we don't, go so far as to say body, blood, soul, and divinity, but, but that's, that's understood. You know, we, we just never use that language. But so when we, when we put it in the person, but sometimes even if, if that, if that precious blood has touched the precious body of our Lord has touched the consecrated bread, that's too much for people that are seriously celiac. So I do every single divine liturgy have a second chalice that, that, that there's no intention that the precious body has mm-hmm. never touched it. Um, and so that, that is a, what we call economia. That is a, a, a pastoral decision that, that I make um, to break from the norm, but in a way of I am making an educated decision to say that that, that is okay um, because we're not looking at this legalistically at all. And even our, our brothers and sisters in the Roman church would say that Jesus resides in his fullness in just the chalice or in the consecrated host. So so yes, that's, w- that's what we would do. But yes, if there are priests who who will not do that. Of course, it, it's a good thing. And if this is the only Byzantine church near you, you know, ask him about it. If he, if he refuses for any reason to, to allow that you, I mean, you can go to the bishop just to say, you know, how does the bishop feel? But if the bishop and the priest um, both feel that way, then, then yeah, I mean, it, it, there, there needs to be a certain obedience there. Um, and you know, whether that means you need to go to a different parish or receive spiritual communion or, you know, it's not always healthy thing to test your level of celiac. Um, but there is, there is things you can do, um, but, but just talk to your priest about it. That's usually the answer that is the most appropriate for things like this. Talk to your priest. Thank you. That was a very adequate and full answer. Are you being snarky or are you being... A little bit of each? Um, yeah, a little bit of each. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> um, uh, this question is for me, and it's a nice and easy one. It's from, I'm sure she wouldn't mind saying, Tanya Candelosi, um, who is an old-time acquaintance of mm-hmm. both of us, Father Michael, because um, we used to be in Denver with her. It's a good thing you said old-time, not just old. She know. <laughs> that, 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 that was a, that was a jab specifically that not, at Tanya, mean, who knows I love her, but yeah, <laughs> an old time. Did I use the wrong phrase? No, it just, you used the right phrase, but it was very close to being the wrong phrase. Oh, because I am really bad with idioms. Have we talked Ta- about this on the podcast? I'm so bad with idioms. Oh, we've never talked about, it. we've just experienced it. I, <laughs> I've, <laughs> I've learned this only since coming to the monastery, like all of these idioms mm-hmm. that I've said wrong my entire life. Um, and uh, the first one that I remember being pointed out to me was I said that I read something front to cover <laughs> instead of either front to back or cover to cover. Yeah, nice. <laughs> and um, Mother Ileana messes up idioms a lot too, but she's her first language is Ukrainian, so she has an excuse. Mm-hmm. And yep. I just... I don't have an excuse. Um, I also said recently that um, we were talking about something and I said that we are waiting for the other foot to fall. <laughs> <laughs> I just don't like Instead that. Of the other shoe to drop. Um, nice. So anyways, I thought I might've actually said the wrong thing. Tanya, I love you. Here's your question. <laughs> Sister Natalia, can you do a virtual final profession? then all who listen to the podcast and friends can join. Is that even allowed? Um, That's actually something that we've talked about and we're probably doing. Um, I mean, we'll have as many guests as we can at the life profession itself, but then I think we're also going to live stream so that, um, and it would be an open live stream for, uh, for podcast listeners and friends and 
those who overlap those categories. Um, and it's actually, it's such a beautiful service. So when it does happen, I'll make sure all of you know, but I would really encourage you to watch it at least, if not the whole service, because the whole, the whole it's, it's part of divine liturgy and it'll probably be a hierarchical divine liturgy and all that. So the whole thing um, will probably be like three hours long or something. Um, but even if you're not going to watch the whole liturgy, I would at least encourage you to watch the life profession part of it, which is probably about an hour, 45 minutes. I don't know. What do you think? You've been at all the ones I have plus mother Theodora. Yeah. If it's just a life profession without the, with, you know, without the liturgy in other words, or, um, yeah. yeah. It's probably, like how, well, how long the, do you think just the profession is? It probably seems shorter hour. than the, that. Like the, the but, going, I mean the whole thing. Maybe it might be shorter than that. So, anyways, are we are we really trusting minutes, my maybe. memory here? I, I would not recommend that. No, that's a terrible okay. idea. Um, yeah. But it's it's a very beautiful. There's there's so it much leading up Absolutely. to it. Maybe I should do I should do an episode just about the life profession and all of the symbols and all of that yeah. um, beforehand, so that people who do watch it can kind of know what they're seeing. Um, yeah, I like that. Absolutely. Maybe it can be in an eight part series on. <laughs> Um, <laughs> you are so snarky <laughs> this episode. <laughs> I'm so snarky. Oh, I'm sorry. It's um, okay. And did you see, I don't know if you've seen my mom's email yet, but she said that she really loved the Divine Liturgy episodes and that they oh, were very okay. helpful for her. I've gotten that from, from quite a few people. So ha, ha, <laughs> take that sister. <laughs> okay. Um all right, next question. This is from, we're going to get through a lot of these, I think. So right. um, we're only about halfway through on time. Although I guess an hour is probably like our limit. It probably shouldn't be our aim. <laughs> yes, this is true. Either way, however it's flowing. So, however it's flowing. Keith, um, this question is from Keith. Would father talk more about his ADHD sometime? He mentioned it on the most recent episode. I know that can be personal... Um, so on and so forth. I probably don't need to share his personal information, but anyways, he um, wants you to talk about that. And he says um, specifically like maintaining a regular schedule in work and prayer and difficulty in remaining on task in work. That's the first part of the question. There's another part that we'll get into, but uh, do you have anything to share about how you've, sort of learn to work through your ADHD. Sure. So um, I have what's called adult onset ADHD. So it's it, it did not affect me when I was young. Um, in the same way, I was actually very calm and even shy child. Um, I definitely had a... A tr- I mean, I was so shy that that my I've shared this story before. My brother Sean would have to introduce me to people because I would just I would just be I'd sit and stare, be like, "Hi, boys, how are you?" And my brother Sean, I'm like, "Oh, we're good. How are you?" And he's like, "My name is Sean." And he's your younger and brother. He's my younger brother, and this is my brother. This is my older yeah. brother Michael. And I would kind of <laughs> sit and nod, and I was just very very shy. I would not I had maybe you know maybe one or two friends. That's all I really wanted or needed. Um, I'd certainly talk a lot at home, but um, very shy, very calm, um, you know, got through school fine, you know, but when I, when I got into college, I think it was just the transition from a really a not very good public school system where I didn't really have to do much to do well um, to a very intense college experience, especially at, at Thomas Aquinas College, TAC, where I went the first year. Um, and all of a sudden I just having, having no study habits, I think. And then the beginning of this uh, adult onset ADHD got, got me, um, I failed out. Um, and then I went to community college for a year. Really, there were not many demands at all there. And I, I only took classes I wanted to take. Um, so it was, I, I did just fine again, got adequate grades. And then it wasn't till I had to start like writing papers because at TAC you don't really write any papers and the same thing at, in community college. It wasn't until I just had to write, start writing papers where I had a project that I had to spend a lot of time researching and then a lot of time producing this written paper where it just, it was, it was nearly impossible for me. I, I, I would take 
I would, it would not a very good job. I would have to, I would cram and literally pull an all nighter before any paper I wrote. And I, the, the, the stress of the, and I would just call it procrastination at the time, but, um, the stress of having to get something done in an all nighter. But the problem with that is then on top of saying, well, I'm going to pull an all nighter and get it, write the whole paper in one night on top of that too. When, when you're that pushed for time and you have a deadline, that's very quickly approaching and you're getting tired because you're physically exhausted. You just, you don't care anymore, you know, and, and you, you start saying, I, you know, I'm, I need to hand in something. And I, I really, the quality of this, like I, I put some good things in there, but by the end of it, like you've all probably seen that meme of, of the horse where like the head and the front limb of the front limbs of the horse are very, very good. And then like, as it moves back and finally the, the, the hind legs and the tail of the horse are like a little child drew them, you know, it's like this, um, it's like the, in other words, you start, you start something as good as you're none. Um, but, but you, 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 you start something, <laughs> um, very, very well. Like how you put all this effort in the beginning and then by the end of it, you're just like, I need to get it done. And they peter out. Exactly. And so that would happen to me all the time. And so I really didn't get very good mm-hmm. grades. And that is when to my shame, I don't say this with any sort of confidence or encouragement at all, but I, I, I took a friend's Adderall cause I need to stay up for a long time. I need to stay awake for like two, three nights in a row to get up, to get my, my, a big paper done. And, um, and I did, and I took a lot of Adderall and I stayed up and then the first few hours of taking that Adderall were absolutely incredible. I felt normal for the first time in my life, but then after you know, using it for a long time, I started having hallucinations and kind of a lot of other things, um, that are just not good. And, and I, Adderall can be very, very addictive because of the way it makes you feel, especially if you have ADHD and it, it can be, I, I've been prescribed it now cause I've been diagnosed, but I've been prescribed it. I don't use it anymore. I'll get to that in a moment. But, um, but, uh, I, I really did feel normal for the first time, but then it can, it can, it's, you become dependent upon it and, and it, you, you don't feel normal after a while. You, you, you have to force it normal. You have a chemical normal, which is not healthy and not good at all. Uh, well, as uh, it's saying, I'm being immoral. I mean, I, I truly believe that I, I sinned by doing it. Um, so then later on when I got diagnosed, um, but but what I found so just out to emphasize, though emphasize you are not encouraging people to do this. I am not, of course, of course. Um, and then and then what I found out though is that for my type of ADHD, um, like Adderall, Ritalin, those things are are what we call uppers. They're talking about street drugs, you know, they're uppers that they 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 raise your um, awareness and can very easily also raise your anxiety because it, it it gets you um, in a sense excitable, and so. Um, my body did not do well when I took, especially when I, I couldn't afford Adderall once I was diagnosed as a priest. So I would take Ritalin and, and coffee and Ritalin did not do well in my system. They, I, I just felt really, really, really odd. So I talked to my doctor about that and he said, well, you, you really can't do both. If you're taking the Ritalin, you need to go off coffee. And I said, well, what if I just did coffee? He's like, well, that'll work. It won't be as effective, but coffee kind of is the same thing in less of a way than, than the Ritalin's going to do. Um, so then I started drinking coffee, but you know, uh, that, that's one thing. I mean, Keith, I, I hear you, bud. Like it's, it's, is really, really, really hard for me to stay focused. It's really, really hard for me to get any work done that I have to sit down and produce something in like in one sitting or even in multiple sittings. It's just very, very hard. And so in my experience, um, I have found ways of, of getting done what I need to get done. And one of those ways is coffee. I, I am not against medication if you need it take it, you know, go, go talk to a doctor and you can be prescribed medication if you need it. Um, find ways. But the other way I did was I just, I was rarely in my office. You know, if I needed to get something done, like produce a bulletin or produce a paper or, or answer a very long question by writing it out, I would go out, I'd go out to coffee shops and even to bars sometimes. And I'd sit there and work because there was enough in my specific form of, of adult onset ADHD, there was enough going on where I could only focus for say 30 seconds. And then I'd have, I'd look up and for 30 seconds, observe the crazy world around me. And then I go back down again for 30 seconds, look up for 30 seconds, go back down. And I had to kind of have other distractions. If I like in seminary, when I had to get things done, I would, I would sometimes have music playing in my ears. And then also on the quarter of my screen or on a different screen, have a movie going that had nothing to do with the music and then having the music and the movie there were two other things other than the paper I was writing to distract me so that if I needed that distraction, that's kind of what my form is. I need distraction because focusing for extended periods of time is nearly impossible for me. Um, but I can tell you I'm 42 years old right now and I do, 
I am getting better at it. So even I think habit, virtue, prayer, you know, God, God knows I have this. I, I believe it's a disorder that he put in me, you know, or that he allowed to happen. I don't want to, I don't want to say it that way, but it's a, it's a disorder. It's an evil thing, but it's not as good unless these evils happen. So he's going to allow me within this evil um, that I have to, to function well, to serve well, to grow well. Um, so it's obviously that grace is at work, but you, you, you find practical ways of dealing with it. And medication again is, is certainly an option or like me, you just find other places to work. If I have the freedom of this, this quote job, this vocation is that I can, I can go out and work in a coffee shop during the day, you know, if I need to. Um, but yeah, so it's, it's finding those ways, making sure that there's in prayer and then also just, you know, not needing to be like other people. I mean, it's, I said when I took the Adderall that I felt quote normal, but that's normal for other people. That's not my normal. And I just had to accept that. I had to accept that studying is harder for me than it is for most people. You know, um, writing is, is harder for me th than it is for most people. And I just had to come to an understanding and say, I accept and I'm content that my struggles are different than most other people's struggles. And that's the case with everybody. We all have our crosses. We all have our thorns in the flesh. So that was just one of mine. And I mean, you've, you've guys, you've listened to the podcast, like you know how, <laughs> how I've, I've, I remember very, very little. And I, this is part of my temperament too. I'm so phlegmatic that, that you know things don't affect me too deeply and that can be really hard sometimes because the negative things don't affect me too deeply which is good but positive things don't either by the way this is also why i talk so fast <laughs> it's also it's also why i do things like um I, this happened when i was at my parents house i literally walked into the bathroom washed my hands walked out of the bathroom, laid down in bed and like 30 seconds laying in bed, I realized I'd left the water flowing on the, in the sink. Like I, I just think, heard I water. thought you were going to say you forgot to go to the bathroom. <laughs> no, no. Well, that, I'm sure that's happened too, but, but people with ADHD like mine will, will often forget to, you know, to turn the water off. I mean, like literally you turn the water on, wash your hands and then you just, your mind goes elsewhere. So you walk away, leave the water running and you're on to the next thing of the day. So it can be, there can be just a lot of little things like that, but you just, you learn to cope and you just have to have to accept things the way they are. And, you know, I will never be an academic. I will never probably teach in a seminary. I'll never, there's certain things that are probably I'm not called to. And it's pretty obvious, you know, I can, you know, my parents say, oh, you can do anything you put your mind to. Yep. But there's also things that, that like, like being an academic or, or things like that, that'll probably never be available. And I just shouldn't desire them. You know, God is, God's giving me um, the ability so to thrive. Many yeah, in my in my ministry, um, even though I can't do those things very well. So anyway, I hope all that makes sense. Yeah, I think I think that's. I would assume that's very helpful. Um, and listeners have also probably heard the episodes that we did when you didn't have any coffee. Yeah, <laughs> and, and <laughs> I was like, right, Father Michael, that, yeah. calm down. <laughs> <laughs> um, so it is funny because like co coffee kind of normalizes me, you know, that mm -hmm. caffeine normalizes me, um, which is weird. But I mean, I, I, th I think at some point though, God's going to call me to get off the coffee too, you know, and just say, you know, I don't want you to need anything. It's similar. So. Um, Laura, who you and I know and love so much. Um, uh, she, yeah, she's the same alcohol wakes her up and, um, coffee puts her to sleep. Like it calms her down. Mm -hmm. um, but so, and I, oh, what was I going to say about that coffee? Wow, it's happening to me. Um, that's fine. It's coffee, in the spiritual genes. Playing to your strengths. Um, I don't know. Maybe it'll come back to me. Um, but... Maybe it was just the thing about the episodes without coffee. Anyways, Keith continues to go on um, to talk about fasting and the struggles of, of fasting when it's impacting work. Um, like if, which, which I, can, I can understand this because um, when, we have, when we have days at the monastery, for instance, that we're fasting until like after pre-sanctified liturgy. So we're fasting from the time we get up until the evening. Um, and supper or dinner is our first meal. Um, you just, you do feel really low energy um, when, when you've fasted for a long time and your body kind of, um, your body gets used to it and, and you start to, uh, to not need it as much and that's fine. But, um, but I can understand. So, so he's saying it can be very hard to, to remain on task um, and focus at work if he's fasting. And so if that, if that happens to someone who, 
has just a regular sort of focus level, then I would imagine it would be even harder for mm-hmm. someone who's starting out who has baseline um, low attention level. Yeah. And so that, that totally makes sense to me. I would give a couple recommendations. Um, and Father Michael, then you can please feel free to add to this. One would be take solace in knowing, is that the right word? Yeah. Yeah, take comfort. Take, okay. Yeah. Take solace in knowing that even even like the desert fathers and even St. Basil in his rule and things like that talk about the need to modify fasting depending on the needs of your body. Um, and in a monastery, uh, like some some nuns or some monks might even need to eat meat during the great fast if that's what their if that's what their body needs. Um, mm-hmm. And so, so there is that, but some things I would recommend, um, if you really feel that it's impacting your job, which is what God is calling you to do right now is to be, to be present at your job. If that's where he's asking you to be and, and the fasting is really impacting that and, and making it hard for you to, to, to be productive at work, I would suggest trying to fast in more creative ways. And, um, but I, I wouldn't say only fast in creative ways that don't have to do with food. That can be helpful. So fasting from, if you really like to listen to music, fasting from music or fasting from, I fast from communications on Wednesdays and Fridays, um, other than like letter writing, but I don't have electronic communications on Wednesdays and Fridays. And that can be super helpful. But I would say even do something that you can fast with food so that you're also addressing your actual body. Um, but maybe figure out, for instance, here's, here's an idea. Figure out what it is that you need um, nutrition-wise in order to be productive and focused at work. Um, if you realize that what you need is some combination of protein and sugar, um, then you find some food that maybe isn't your favorite food, <laughs> but some food that will give you those things, a handful of peanuts and some simple carb or something like that. Um, and that's what you eat for lunch every Wednesday and Friday. <laughs> you know, um, whatever it is that's giving you the nutrition that you need um, while also still having some sort of restriction or some sort of very intentional choosing. Um, yeah. What do you have to say about that, Father Michael? Yeah, I think that's great. I think that's the ideal to look for. Um, you know, there's so many uh, unique situations like yours, Keith, but also people with eating disorders who may, you know, for a time, you may just not want to worry about food at all. So listen to your nutritionist, listen to your therapist and and just and, and do what they're saying and then use these other things, like Sister said, ways of, of fasting. But I do think that that it is important. I know this is kind of hard to hear sometimes that that we do that we do try to move towards the norm. In other words, there, there's always this. In other words, if I if I'm like you know you Keith and we've already talked about that we're kind of the same in this way. If I say it's really hard for me to do any sort of fasting and food wise at all and still get my work done. Then yes, do exactly as Sister said. You know, your 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 work is important for your family. Your work is part of your vocation. You don't want to make you don't you want fasting to be debilitating to your job. That's very important. You know, so so talk to your spiritual father, and that's where a spiritual director or even a spouse or 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 you know a friend can can speak wisdom into what if you're changing from the norm, speak wisdom into that reality. But I do think if if there's any unique if there's anything unique about what you're doing that's different from the norm, there should be maybe a little bit of work put in through the guidance of whoever's guiding you spiritually to move closer to that norm. In other words, mm-hmm. and I, I think this, is, this isn't even if it really makes sense to ever be attainable, but I think in my life as a celibate pastor of a parish, I do think that it's important for me to say, it probably doesn't make much sense for me to, to pray all the monastic hours in their fullness, but I should always still want to move closer and closer and closer to that reality. I should still say, um, you know, is God providing you with this year or this week or this month, the ability to do that. So when, when we, in other words, Keith, in your specific situation and mine, 
to say, let me increase my fasting. Let, let, let me bring it down to almost nothing. But if I can work a little bit more every week or every month or every fasting season and say, Every, every little fasting season, I'm going to try a little bit more so that my body actually adapts. And through the use of virtue and habit, I could probably get better at actually fasting, even on the days that I work. In the beginning, I need to be very, very careful, but I can probably get better at that so that maybe 25 years from now, when I'm about to retire, you know, I can actually do a full fast in the days, even though I'm working, because my body has adapted to it through habit and through virtue. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's super helpful. So do everything sister said, but I think there should always be a little bit. And again, with, within our within our Eastern Christian way of thinking, um, th- having having a goal that is that is the ideal, and me only moving towards it slightly every single fasting season is perfectly fine. That should not give us anxiety. It should give us a certain rest in the fact that we're not there yet. We probably will not be there for a few years, but there's a certain contentment that we have as guided by a spiritual director or a friend or a family, whoever it is, um, having that other voice speak in where two or three are guided in my name, as Jesus says, where we can say, I'm, I'm, I'm still moving towards the ideal, even though I know it's not God's vocation for me to be living that ideal right now. But I can still say, I'm, I'm still moving towards that. I still want that one day. Mm-hmm. Um, he asked in the same email, if we have any recommendations for books with more stories and sayings of the desert fathers. Um, I don't have any off the top of my head right now, other than the art of prayer. Mm-hmm. And I don't remember if, I think he's already looked up the ones we've mentioned on the podcast. I can't remember if I've mentioned that one before, but the art of prayer is a good one. Um, art of prayer is kind of a, a an adaptation of the philokalia, so it's like a, mm-hmm. it's a way of of ta- like a, a kind of a beginner's guide to the philokalia. I mean, if you just there's so many books just called the Desert Fathers or the Writings of the Desert Fathers, or you know, books on certain Desert Fathers. Um, that, that you can find. And I mean, almost all of them are just translations of the desert fathers with a, with a unique introduction. Um, father, father Nathan, sorry, father Nathan's in the, ne- in the next office over. What, do you recommend any books about the desert fathers? You know them well. The like, is there one book you could, we could recommend to our podcast listeners on the desert fathers? You mean original source or Let's do original source. Okay, he's going to look up, and I'll, 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 well, we're going to put it on our notes for this podcast. Is there, so you can, you can go with the Egyptian Desert Fathers. Okay. Get, they're all different, called, they're all called Apophic Matas, but the one that's most famous is the Egyptian Desert Fathers. Okay. 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 So we're talking about Egyptian and Palestinian Desert Fathers here. So we're going to look up some of the sources. We'll, we'll give them okay. to you in a bit. Okay. And I will, so I'm going to have, I'm going to give you one more question, Father Michael, okay. um, specifically addressed to you. I'm very happy most of these are addressed to you. And then, um, and then once two people submitted the same question and they are both a call to action for you, Father Michael. So I'm going to give you that too. Okay. Um, the question, this is from Robert. Father, I thought about trying to filter through the old podcast to try to find where you said it, but I know you said it a couple times, so I figured you'd remember off the top of your head. What, <laughs> that's, that's, a, that's quite the assumption. Um, so what is your definition of virtue as relating to habit or something like that? I think it was connected to liturgy deepening our connection to God. You had said something about virtue as it relates to habit. Do you remember this? Yeah, so so basically, I, I, I know the concept. Basically, it's that, that um, when we build good habits, that leads to virtue. In other mm. words, vir- virtue is, there's human virtue, there's divine virtue. Um, divine virtue is usually defined as just something that, that, that is a gift from God. Um, in other words, something that we cannot attain just through habit. Um, but, but the two, the two work together because it's, there really is a sense of if I grow in human virtue, God is at work as well, but I'm participating in him. And I cannot, if God's giving me divine virtues like faith, hope, and love, then I have to work on receiving those well. So that, that there's always a work that is, I am doing and God is doing together. Um, but in other words, the, maybe in the context of this answer, I'll just put it this way. There, there's, there's something about um, starting very small and, and, and getting better and better and better at certain things. And this is what I mean by habit. So if I, let's say, if I, if my spiritual director tells me to, um, if my spiritual director tells me to uh, wake up and to pray first thing in the morning, 
right? That, that, that's when, that's when we want you to pray is first thing in the morning. And I say, um, Ooh, man, I, I literally roll out of bed, suck down a coffee, you know, wash my face and I'm in the car and I'm still five minutes late to work. Like that's how I am now. And he, and so then my projector says, okay, the, the first bit of the habit is, is that you need to spend part of your commute praying. So memorize the Trisagium prayers, spend part of your commute praying. And then and now what, once you've, and you say, oh man, Father, I really like listening to podcasts or to, to music in the car or whatever. I really like doing that. And he goes, okay, well literally just spend, spend just pray the Trisagium prayers for the first, you know, minute that you're in the car and then you can listen to those other things. And then he says, okay, now I need you to add for the, for five minutes in the car. Then I want you to add five more minutes. So you're doing 10 minutes in the car and then you're doing the whole commute. And then now try praying those prayers before you take the shower, before you drink your cup of coffee or after you drink your cup of coffee or before you start your car. You know, there's other things and you just, you say it's what was impossible for me because there's no way that when I wake up, my alarm goes off and I say, I could get up right now and pray for 10 minutes or I could literally sleep for 10 more minutes. Sleep is going to win. I, 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 am, I am powerless. I don't have the virtue of getting up. I, I want to do it, but I can't. I don't have that virtue. So I build the habits of lesser ways of kind of leading up to that reality. So the virtue is to be able to get up when I want to get up. The virtue is to say, when my alarm goes off, when I say, what are my choices now? Sleep in or get up? And, and pray, obviously getting up and praying is the, is the better thing to do. So when I, when I, the virtue is being able to say, I can, I have total freedom to do one or the other. I, I, I ha, I've, if I want to, I can get up right now. Whereas that can be impossible for us at some point. So that's what habit is. And in relation to this idea of virtue, habit is saying, I do something over and over and over and over and over and over and over again until it gets easier to do. And then, so if, if those, if the things get easier to do are good things and that's virtue, the other thing is of course, vice, same thing happens. If I, if I start getting in bad habits where I'm doing something bad over and over and over again, the bad thing just gets easier to do. This is how our humanity works. Um, so that's what I mean. Whatever we spend our time doing, we spend our, our energy doing, we spend our time thinking about those things are going to become easier to do, whether they're good or bad. So build good habits, even if you start really small, because those habits, those good habits will make doing good easier or, or, and then that's what the human virtues are. And then they also will make it easier to receive well and put into practice well, the divine virtues that God gives. Thank you. Um, the call to action is that two people reached out to ask for um, images that you had promised that are, um, I'm sending you an email right now to remind you, but it's the wow, two realist you. paintings. Um, one is Mary's assumption and the other is Peter and John running to the tomb. Um, and you talked about them on our episode, what we missed. Thank you. I will. Uh, I love those images. What was the first one? Mary's assumption. Oh yes. Okay. I know what both of those are. Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay. Those should be um, easy to find. Yeah. And then I can very quickly answer this question. Um, someone wants to know, I'm very curious who this is because, um, anyways, someone wants to know who designed my hand cross that I will receive at my life profession. Mm -hmm. um, so I have a monk friend who is Unyev, who is in Unyev, Ukraine, um, at the monastery there. And he, one of the monks there carved it for me. I don't know who. Um, so that's the answer to that question. Nice. But if, if someone wants, who, if whoever asked that question wants to reach out and tell me who you are, that would be great because <laughs> I'm curious. <laughs> I, have, I have the, uh, Father Nathan sent me the, his recommendation for a, a book of okay. the original source. So it's called The Sayings of the Desert Fathers the alphabetical collection um, translated with a foreword by Benedict Award, SLG preface by Metropolitan Anthony. And it is published by Cistercian publications. That is C I S T E R C I A N public uh, publications. So there you go. We'll, we'll put that up. We'll put the link, okay. but that's what it is. We still have so many more questions, but I'm going to call it. We all understand. <laughs> I'm trying to save our poor listeners who <laughs> surely are very sick of our very long episodes. <laughs> uh, that's fine. And God bless you for still listening. Um, I'm sure many would say, stop, we like it. 
<laughs> Maybe. We'll have, a, we'll have to put a poll out there. Oh, no. That will just hurt my feelings. Oh, okay. You know I'm so sensitive. We'll start with we'll a poll We'll put saying, a poll out there and not tell Sister and tell you about it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, okay. Cool. Um, good. Any last thoughts before prayer intentions? Nope. Let's ask for prayer. Okay. Or- I was kind of hoping you did have a last thought because I just realized I don't have a prayer intention and it's oh. my episode. Well, I can go first um, if you want. I do have one. Okay, great. Please go first. Um, if you will just pray for, I don't think they meant mind me saying their first names, but Connie and Lance. Um, we have had uh, some friends of mine here in LA that 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 have that I've been uh, been uh, assisting in 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 various ways. And uh, yesterday was a rough day. Um, we were trying to move things around, and it was just kind of one thing after the other. Um, so, and just it was a rough day for for everybody concerned. So, if you could just pray for uh, for Connie and Lance, and um, that that our Lord's will be done and that all three of us are accepting of whatever that is. That'd be great. Okay. Um, and I don't know why this is who's on my heart, but this is who's on my heart. Um, if you could please pray for Father Dennis Hrubiak, who is a retired priest from our eparchy, the eparchy I'm in, not the eparchy Father Michael's in, the eparchy of Parma. And he's just very delightful, very beautiful. I almost said delightful. That was like going to be the same word I used. That's the first delightful. one you did. Yes. He's just he's, delightful. I, yeah. That's the word for Father Dennis. Just, he's just, and just, he's got this like childlike joy that is mm-hmm. completely contagious. I've told him before, I wrote him a, a letter about this, but I've also told him, he often has liturgy for us at our monastery, but um, I've told him that he is he is David's liar to my Saul. Um, mm. It's like, <laughs> or his smile, his smile is the liar to my Saul. Um, Beautiful. Because it's like whenever David plays the liar and Saul is angry, like the anger just totally goes away and he's, um, nice. he can't even be angry. And I'm like, that's what it's like when Father Dennis smiles. I just. <laughs> that's oh. cool. I like that. So pray for Father Dennis. Cause yeah, that's all. Cool. Amen. All right. That is all I think. Reverend Father, give the blessing. May the Lord bless you all and keep you, cause his face to shine upon you, have mercy on you. May you be accepting of God's vocation in your temperament, in in the thorns in your side, the thorns in your flesh that he gives you. May you be open to um, good habit that leads to virtue. May you be patient with yourself as God is in his patience and in his timing, that you may um, be desirous of of the virtue that leads to an acceptance of the gift of holiness, of faith, of hope, and of love. Um, may you not be distracted by my, uh, my office phone here. <laughs> and uh, may our Lord send you forth into the world to be a witness. Um, of humility in, in asking and answering questions in whatever capacity he has asked you to do that. And may our Lord bless you in every way, even unto bodily salvation. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Thanks, guys. Thanks for your questions. They're great questions. Yes. Keep sending them. Love y'all. Thank you. Love you too, sister. Love you. Bye.